Captain Jackass 100 says, this why women shouldn't talk. <laughs> if you struggle at all financially, you don't deserve to eat out. And it's little things like that that can make a huge difference in the behavioral side of someone who is learning to change their money habit. Hey, finance fam. So on Instagram, I put out a response to a Dave Ramsey video. And I wasn't disagreeing with what Dave Ramsey said entirely, but I was just trying to give a different perspective or a different strategy. And the comments were scathing, okay? <laughs> At one point, as it was like getting a lot of views in a very short amount of time, I had to stop reading the comments because I was getting a little upset. You have to just take it and make something useful from it. So this is why I'm, I'm making this video. So let's watch the video and then get into some of the comments and my response. Different food is entertainment. It is not nutrition. If you want to do entertainment, you do entertainment when you're not broke and in debt and don't have an emergency fund. You will have a better meal when you learn to cook at home. I hear what the man is saying, but this type of mentality doesn't really work in the real world. Here's why. Think about a bodybuilder, somebody that's eating very healthy all week to achieve a goal with their physique. At the end of the week, they typically reward themselves with a cheat meal. And the reason that they do this is because they're working hard all week and they don't want to get burnt out and derail off of their plan that's going to help them reach their goals. The thing is this cheat meal is so small in relation to all of the hard work they've put in all week that it's not going to completely screw up what they're doing. Money functions in the same way, right? If we are budgeting, eating in every single day and never rewarding ourselves along the way with anything um, because we are being punished, we're not going to continue to feel motivated to make those good choices with our money. So I think a better approach is to do it like a bodybuilder, right? All maybe set a specific time period, a week, every two weeks, every month. You do all the right things, make the right moves, and then you can have your quote unquote cheat meal. So a few things people did not like about this video. And look, I agree with Dave. I think any reasonable financial planner, anybody that works with people would agree. If you are in debt, if you do not have an emergency fund, you need to be doing everything that you can, even if you do have to sacrifice here and there to get that emergency fund saved and to get that debt paid down. With that said, a lot of people hated that I used the term bodybuilder. They said, no, bodybuilders do not do cheat meals. They don't do that until after competition. Okay, well, everybody took it way too literally. Okay. What I meant was somebody who lives a healthy lifestyle. Typically, when you are living a healthy lifestyle, you are going to have moments where you're going to crave something. You're going to crave maybe a piece of pizza, maybe a burger, maybe a milkshake. And if you don't, hey, good on you. I'm glad that you're so disciplined. But for the rest of us, we probably want those things every once in a while, those quote unquote joys of life. The second term that a lot of you didn't like was that I used the term reward, meaning we reward ourselves by, you know, doing, going out to eat to a restaurant or whatever. Maybe I could have used a better word, but the point still stands. The other thing is a lot of you guys didn't even hear me. You were mad because you thought that I was saying if you're in debt, you should go out to eat all the time. That's not what I said. I said, instead of taking that scarcity mindset and that I cannot do mindset, replace that with, I'm going to work really hard to achieve these goals over a certain amount of time. Give yourself a time frame, whether it's a week, a, a couple of weeks, a month of you doing the right things. And then at the end of that time period, you do something that brings you joy within reason within reason, key. I've actually worked with individuals. And if you give somebody a blanket, one size fits all strategy for how they can handle paying down their debts and saving their emergency funds, it's not going to work the same for everybody. And the reason for that is because personal finance is personal. Let's hear some of these comments. If you struggle at all financially, you don't deserve to eat out until you get your money right or do fun things until you can be stable. So I did a poll on this and most of you disagree with this completely. If that's how you think, that's totally fine. But for the rest of the people out there, this doesn't work for them. Here's an example. I will say we have been able to pay off a ton of debt with Dave Ramsey's baby steps. And a lot of people have, and I say kudos to Dave for helping people do that. That's important. But I do agree with you. We are six figures in debt, family of five, 
homeowners, and it's simply hard to be that intense where you can't enjoy anything. I mean, it's going to take us a while to pay this off. I can't imagine not doing anything for years. Treating yourself to a date night is way different than a vacation. The reward shouldn't set you off track drastically. That is exactly my point. If you're in debt and don't have an emergency fund and you are planning a vacation to Cabo, okay, that's a problem. For just about anybody that's in the financial industry, they would agree. Those small things that you do when you're doing what brings you joy every once in a while, you only do that if you've been on the right track and you only do that if it's not going to derail you. Square peg in a round hole says, bull. I haven't paid to eat at a restaurant since December of 2019. It took some discipline in the beginning, but once you get into the habit, it's easy. No reward needed. People got way too fixated on the going out to eat part of this video and didn't see the forest through the trees at all. Insert anything else that brings you joy within reason with going out to eat. It could be going to Starbucks. It could be Target. It could be buying a new throw pillow for your couch. I don't care. Insert whatever brings you joy and that's what it is. So you saying is okay for people with debt and no money. It's okay for them to go out because it's a reward? No, that's not what I'm saying. As long as it's not going to derail you, if that is what's going to help your mental state. There is a behavioral finance part of finance that people don't even talk about. And this is so unique for the individual. It depends on how you were raised, what you saw happen with money growing up, beliefs that you've inherited or crafted because of certain things that have happened throughout your life. Let me tell you a story. I have a friend who was working to pay off thousands of dollars in debt, and it was a really a crippling amount of debt for her. She was working really, really hard, got the debt like halfway paid off and came to me and was like, hey, I really, really want to get a tattoo. And I said, <sighs> and immediately my head went to not the right time. But then I thought about it a little bit more and she discussed with me how she's been working so hard to pay down this debt and change her habits, and she did, and she gets it now. I said, how much is it? She said, $100. I said, okay, $100 will not derail this plan. If this is what will make you feel motivated to keep going and give you kind of that reset, that break, then I'm okay with that. And it's little things like that that can make a huge difference in the behavioral side of someone who is learning to change their money habits, right? So sometimes this takes guidance and, and that's key. A lot of people don't have a professional to guide them through this. And that's why they take this blanket, one size fits all advice. And I'm sure that it helps a lot of people, but for a lot of people, it doesn't work. Champ says, at first my hackles were up when you started. But yes, I realized I've adopted this as well. A couple times a month, I'll go out. However, I found you can go out and have fun on the cheap as well. Very, very true. Love that he mentioned that, that you could do it on the cheap. I also love that he said he just goes out a couple times a month and that satisfies him, right? That's good, that's great, that's moderation. A few drinks and appetizer here or there. In the end, you're both right. I like how he says, make it a burning fire passion to get rid of debt. And yeah, I agree. If you can if you can do that, that's the way to go always because the faster you pay off your debt, the quicker you will get rich, right? And so I agree with that. But I really appreciated that comment, especially when things like this were popping up. This went over her head. Don't waste time educating her. Or you totally missed the point that guy was making, LOL, to do this stupid ass video. Or the man was talking about when you have no money and you are talking about bodybuilders. It's not the same thing. Again, it, it didn't land. It just didn't land. The forest was not seen through the trees on this one. She's an Instagram intellectual. It doesn't have to make sense. It's not for smart people. Someone also attacked my CFP credential, which I thought was hilarious. People really don't know what uh, certified financial planners have to do to become certified financial planners or what they know. And, you know, I couldn't help but wonder half of these people that are making these comments, like, do they even know what their adjusted gross income is or what their effective tax rate is? You wonder about these things when you hear these comments because they're so quick to be mad at you and, and scold you. 
but there's a lot about money that they don't even know. This is why women shouldn't talk. Yes. Um, and look, people are going to be on different sides when it comes to a lot of these topics, uh, but that's okay. And that's why we all reach our wealth goals at different times in different ways. I got this comment on Twitter and it was actually refreshing because they actually got my point of this whole video. I feel like it's similar to starting a diet. <laughs> if you cut out everything you enjoy, you're probably going to end up destructively binging later. Better to have a balance that gradually adjusts your habits instead of quitting cold turkey. Yeah, so that, that really is the essence of what I was talking about, is that for some people mentally, the cold turkey thing, the scarcity mindset, the you'll never be able to enjoy anything until this debt is paid down and you have your emergency fund framing doesn't work for most people. That's why when I work with people, I encourage, let's change the behavior, let's shift some things, stop, assess, see how that went, see how we're feeling, and then continue, right? Okay, is the habit starting to stick? What are we struggling with? Why are we struggling with it? How can we fix it? And then, continue along that like and and so you build when you're trying to change habits it has to be done gradually gracefully and with intention and again the blanket advice just doesn't work all right finance fam what do you think did you see the point i was trying to make without getting too caught up in the weeds don't forget to smash the like button please and subscribe if you're not subscribed and i'll see you in the next video